Hey there, Social Blade fans. Dave here for another Social Blade YouTube tip of the week. This week, we're going to be talking about something that I use quite often. In fact, I use it on every video for this series, and it's called chroma keying. It's the actual process of turning something green, like this green screen behind me, into something else. So I could place myself in a digital set, on a motion backdrop, anywhere I need to be. Some of you gamers out there may actually want to sit within a game or do a movie where you're in a game. That's quite useful. So let's look at some of the things that you need to get started and how you actually do this full fun process. So some of the things that you're going to need to get started, of course, is a green screen itself. These also come in blue. There's a great site that is called tubetape.com. I'll put the link in the description so you can view it after this video. But green and blue are the proper choices. The reason being is because they're the furthest away from our skin tone. You want something that is unique besides your skin on your shirt. And by the way, think of your wardrobe as well when you're picking these out. You don't want to wear something blue if you're standing in front of a blue screen or else you'll go invisible. Anything that is green in this case is going to become invisible and will be replaced by an image or video or anything that we really want. So green screen or blue screen, whatever you choose, be sure you get the proper thing. You can't use anything cheap like a forest or navy blue or forest green because you know it's a little bit closer to your skin tone believe it or not and you're gonna have issues keying it out for those who are on a budget try to get something that is actually green or blue and sort of compare it to more professional things but you know these muslin backdrops or the pop-up ones that are available they're not too expensive so i recommend just going for that and just buy it once they last forever now on top of this you're going to need of course lights and lighting is really important because you have to evenly light this backdrop without doing that you're going to have shadows and you're going to have a hard time keying it out which means a lot more work in post-production that you don't want to do. I recommend getting softbox lights. The reason being is because most people don't have a pro studio with a lot of space. So if you use harsh lights, I mean look what we have here, harsh lights are going to create a lot of shadows like this. You don't want that. What you really want is a soft light that evenly lights this behind you. Now if I put my hand right up to the green screen, you can sort of see shadows, but I've got one, two, three, four lights on this set that they're flooding this thing with light. Reason being is lack of shadows. If you have a shadow, that sort of changes that color green back there and you're going to have to key it out and sort of automate it. It's going to be a hassle for you. So get some soft box lights. These are fluorescent, not too bad for the set, and they they throw out a lot of soft light, so you don't have to deal with shadows behind you and get a lot closer. I'm about two feet away from this green screen, and it's going great. You want to make sure you have a backlight as well that sort of casts light on your shoulders and hair. That'll separate you from the backdrop. I have a small little LED light panel up there, and, you know, it does the trick. Now, of course, other than lighting and the green screen, you want a good camcorder that has proper settings. This is going to actually help you out. If you have something like a Flip Mino or Mini or whatever it is, well, sometimes you only have automatic mode on there, but if your camcorder has profile modes or something like that, something manual, that's what you want to go for because what you have to do is adjust your white balance and your exposure to a manual setting. This means that the colors won't be changing behind you as you move, and you'll have a lot better luck keying this out because, believe it or not, green screen is quite picky. You want to set it once, and you only want to set it once and not have to mess with it throughout the shooting process or throughout your scenes. So we covered the green screen, we covered the lighting, we covered the camera. What else is there to really do? Well, I think we have to actually put the media that we've shot with the green and blue screen behind me, put it on the computer and see what we could do because this green is going to be replaced, but whatever we want, we could have ourselves in a video game if we want. So let's have some fun at the computer. Now that we have everything shot and it's all in the editing program, let's get to work. We're working with Vegas Movie Studio HD 11. It's got some decent features, although it's not as good as the prosumer, uh, like uh, Premiere Pro or Vegas Pro. So you may want to invest in those. However, this one's 40 or 50 bucks, and it will do basic chroma keying. So if you're on a budget, this is probably the program to go with. I don't know of anything that keys out for free. Well, if you guys find something, leave it in the comments below, and uh, I'll let people know about that. But either way, here we go, 40 to $50 program to start off with, and we have, if we have the time, I'll show you the more advanced program and why you'd want to go with that. So we have the media on the timeline here, video track 1. We want to actually bump this up to video track 2 because everything green in a chroma key, green or blue screen, is going to be turned transparent, and we want to put something underneath that so it shows through. In fact, let's get started here and move to our effects, video effects tab, and we got the chroma key here on the list. 
we'll drag and drop that onto the project panel. It starts off blue by default, which is canceling out my shirt. So that's not cool. Let's uh, use the eyedropper tool. Before you do that, though, you have to actually uncheck it. Uh, it's just a weird way if this thing works. Uncheck the box so it disables the effect. Go over here, click once, sample any of your green color. If you have something a little bit darker versus something brighter, try to get a little bit of both in there, a little bit of between, in between. And we'll go with the left side and it'll disappear because we have to enable it. So we do that with the checkbox. And, uh, well, here it is. Now we get to sort of adjust for this. And we could do that. I sort of reset. It's uh, doing weird things. Not only because we don't have it set up properly yet, but we can do that by going to our mask selection only. So we're going to show the mask only. And we want to adjust the low and high. The lows, we'll sort of skip over that for now, but let's adjust our high threshold. We'll drag that over the left. We want this to be an even white on black. Everything white is going to be opaque. So we want to sort of adjust that, but we don't want to go too far or not far enough. So that's good. And now we'll adjust our low threshold. If we go not enough, you're going to have white spilling in the background there. So sort of mess with the balance of these settings. Maybe you want to play through this video. It looks like we're going to go something like this. And we're going to turn off the masking feature. And we're going to close this down for now. Let's go over to our project media. Import some soft boxes. Just an image that I have. We'll drag that over to the end. And now we're on a virtual set. Now if we look at this in a little bit more detail, you can sort of see there's a harsh line here. We have to take care of that. And that can be done by going back under the effect here. And we'll choose the blur amount here. Now if we really kick this up, you can see it's sort of adding a drop shadow. We don't want to do that. We just want to soften it up a little bit. Unfortunately, there's no choke in this program, which would take care of that line. And it's only making it a little bit worse by adding a drop shadow to it. So you may choose just to add just a touch to this and deal with it. Now that's sort of what you're going to get with a sort of low budget program like this. But I decided to show you guys how to work with it. Let's move over to Premiere Pro, which is normally what I use to key out on the fly. And uh, it's something that I recommend you guys look into if you are serious about making videos and you can afford it. I know a lot of you guys are on a budget, so I show you guys the affordable software first. So we've imported our media on the timeline. We got video track one here. I've sort of renamed these to virtual set and because I'm on a template that I normally work with. But think of this as video one, video two, three, four, and five, and so on. And we'll drag this up so we can put the soft boxes underneath that so we can sort of see through. Now let's go over and find our ultra key. You can do that by actually uh, going to the effects tab and going through a video effects and finding the keying but we're just going to do this the fast way and just type ultra key now this is one of many plugins there's a chroma keying uh, program in here but ultra key is a little bit better it gives you a little bit more things to choose from and in this case we're going to keep everything default we're going to sample our green color once again a little bit of in between from there we're going to actually scale down this backdrop it's a little bit big by default because it's meant for 1080p and we'll scale to frame size here. So now it fits for our scene. So we have to adjust this. We actually scrolls down so we can look at what we're doing. Select the media where we have the uh, effect applied. And let's go and choose alpha channel for our output. And that's going to show us the black on white or what we're going to go for. We'll go to matte generation. We're going to work our way from top to bottom. The transparency is the first thing you want to adjust. Tone that down to about a 35. The highlight sometimes makes it worse or better. We'll tone that down to a, uh, about a zero. Shadow, turn that to about a 50, or sorry, that's a three. And a tolerance and a pedestal you may have to mess with. In this case, it looks like it's good. You may want to play this through or scrub it. Make sure that nothing spec-wise shows up, especially if you have a camcorder that's not in manual mode. The matte cleanup and everything, well, this is uh, what we're going to adjust, but we have to back to our composite view for output. And you'll notice, once again, it does a little bit better on that harsh edge and around the shirt. But we could choke it a little bit in this program and sort of make that go away. So we'll add a little bit of choke to there, maybe a 15 in this case. And we'll add some softening to it, which also chokes a little bit. So maybe a 15 on that, and we'll back off the choke. 
And so we'll go with about 5 and a 15. Just use round numbers here. Midpoint, spill suppression, and color correction. You really don't need to uh, go about messing with these. If you do want to go about having a colored backdrop, and you can turn down the saturation for anything in front here, so it would look pretty cool. It's sort of like an opposite of what you want to go with. We'll put that back at 100%. And there you have it. A perfect key is what we're going after, and that's what we have in this case. You can sort of see that the backdrop, that hair light that we had, goes on the hair and the shoulders, and it separates you from the backdrop a little bit more. So that's something you want to think about when you're lighting your set. A backdrop or a back uh, hair light is really important to have, and it really helps with the green spill on the shoulders, which will help you when you're keying out. So guys, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I know I'm going to be skipping this next week's episode of Social Blade YouTube Tip of the Week, but, you know, we will be back the week after that. I'm getting my wisdom teeth out, so nothing to worry about. We are skipping a week, but that's that. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button anyway, because we got more episodes coming out after I skip that week. Um, also, follow social media sites for Social Blade. You can find us all over the net. All the things are linked at socialblade.com. We've got some great improvements happening not too far away, guys. So you want to keep on top of that. If you haven't read the blog, you can go find that at socialblade.com. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, all that jazz. But anyway, guys, I'm out of here. If you have any comments, leave them below in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up. And if you have relevant video response, you can do that as well. And other than that, that's an end of this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.